Carla was going to ask you as well at the end if we can take a photograph of get everybody on board at the at the end and try and get a photograph of as many people on the screen as possible. That would be lovely. We could do that. Thank you. If it's all right that we could put it up on our social media as well. Yes, I'm sure everybody would be happy with that. That's a great idea. But my back room's my bloody bedroom window. I want to go up to Belfast Castle and get a photograph up there. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Chris. You've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I like, All a day the like this, Smaller. Christopher, ever beautiful. <laughs> so if I could start by um, welcoming everybody onto the call, um, particularly our guests from Dementia and I. Um, so we have Ashley, the Empowerment Officer, and we have eight members. Um, so I'm just going to mention your names. Hopefully I... Don't leave anybody out. We've got John, Francis, Liz, yeah. Yvonne, Steve, Christopher, Alison, Davy, and, and John. Um, <clears throat> so you're all very, very welcome. And we really do appreciate you, your time to come and speak to us. So we are the Speech and Language Therapy course mm -hmm. at Ulster University in Jordanstown. And we have staff members on, and we also have first and second year students. We have finally year third year students who are currently out on placements so they're unfortunately not able to join us today. Um, we have been doing some work, Michelle and I, you know Michelle, some of you, with yourselves, um, looking at our research. So we have some of you as co-researchers and we're really finding that such a positive experience. You're really making a difference to our research and we've really, we really are enjoying working with you. And as you know, we've started to do some fundraising um, through the George Kennedy Step Out Challenge. Um, so we're really raising um, great money um, for Dementia and I, so we're delighted to be able to give something back. Um, so all of our students have, and ourselves as staff, have been um, out walking, getting the steps and fundraising. Um, so we're delighted to welcome you here today, and we have shared some questions, and I'm sure we'll have some other comments in the chat as well. So I'm going to hand over to Ashley um, and our members, your members, to... Uh, to take, take the session on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, welcome everybody. It's fantastic to have been invited along to join with you all today. My name is Ashley Davis. I work for Dementia NI as an empowerment officer and I have been working for Dementia NI pretty much from the start, um, which was in 2015 whenever Dementia NI first um, was developed. So I'm just going to share my screen here with you all. So um, just to give you a bit of background information about dementia and I, first of all, can I ask just for housekeeping, um, if everybody could just turn your camera off at this stage at the beginning, and we'll ask you maybe to switch your camera on later on, if that's OK. And um, if you could switch your camera off and also mute yourself and direct any questions in the chat box to Dementia NI if possible. And we will try and um, accommodate you with as many questions um, later on as possible. I know we have some of your questions already, but if there's anything additional that comes up, we'll try and address that also. So as I said, Dementia NI was established in 2015. It's a local member-led charity, um, and it was formed by five individuals living with dementia. Um, they all had a diagnosis themselves, the five individuals. Um, two of the former um, members who established the organisation are with us today and they will be able to speak a little bit more later on about Dementia and I and why the organisation was formed. So it was their vision, their motivation, drive, skills and their knowledge that helped form the organisation. The founding members came together uh, two years prior and decided that they wanted to be more than just an activity group or recipients of care and rather they wanted as people with dementia to be able to enable and empower others living with dementia also. So they de developed the charity mission and logo and each member chose a favourite colour to represent their contribution um, within the logo. So you'll see the five different colours there are represented and each of the founding members chose one of those um, colours. Um, Orla, can I just ask you to just keep a wee eye out in the waiting room there and let anybody else in if there's anybody waiting, just I won't be able to see them. Hopefully, yes, I'll, I'll do that, Ashley. Um, so, 
Dementia and I was set up to enable people with dementia to have their voices heard um, and to improve services for not just themselves, but for other people living with dementia in Northern Ireland. They felt that it was all too often the voice of the person with dementia that wasn't being heard. And due to the stigma, people were often sometimes afraid to even talk to them and would talk above them or over the top of them and speak to their carers or professionals rather than to themselves. So in 2015, Dementia and I secured time-limited funding from Atlantic Philanthropies, which was £300,000. And the purpose of this investment was to fund a small number of self-directed peer support empowerment groups and have staff support behind that. And their principal remit at that time was feeding into consultations and lobbying. So I'm going to just play this video which um, was actually the BBC NI Community Life Programme um, a few years ago. And this video that you're going to watch now was directed by, um, produced by, the script was written by Dementia NI members and it stars all the Dementia NI members as well. So hopefully the sound's okay. Um, if you can't hear the sound, if somebody can let me know. I think we've got this sorted, Michelle, so I'll just play this for you now. I'm John. At first look, I'm a normal guy. I also live with dementia. Dementia is a term for a collection of symptoms that rob people of their memories and brain power. It affects my life in lots of ways, but it doesn't mean that I can't talk for myself. I can still make decisions. I helped set up Dementia NI. It's a charity that supports people with the same diagnosis as me because we can still live happy and fulfill lives. We challenge the stigma of a diagnosis. There are around 20,000 people living with dementia in Northern Ireland. We promote our rights and strive to make sure we get the services and support we need. So somebody who gets dementia like myself. Dementia and I members give talks and share our experiences in the hope that others can understand the condition. Dementia and I was really set up to enable people with dementia to have their voices heard. We want more people to be aware of how they can help us maintain our independence within our community. Dementia and I is a unique organization led by people living with dementia, supported by staff and volunteers. Hi, John. Hi, Francis. People were surprised to see you out and about driving the car and you have a diagnosis of dementia. I know, John, I've been diagnosed with dementia, but that doesn't mean that I'm not still active and like getting about. It's fantastic to see people like you, but people, other people don't realise that uh, people with dementia still has a life. Life's for living, and with dementia, you just don't lie down. <laughs> this is Ronnie. Ronnie has been living with dementia for five years. He lives in supported housing and at first felt very isolated after his diagnosis. Before Andy was very depressed and he went out of the house, but since he's joined Dementia and I, he can't keep him in. He likes to get out and about with Dementia and I, and he likes to get the, the awareness across. Ronnie also speaks at events, explaining what it is like to live with dementia. Dementia and I just give me comments to learn and get, get out for a couple of hours on a, on a Friday, and I like it. There are more people living with dementia now than ever before. Dementia and I helps us live life to the full. Volunteers are a vital part of what we do. Taking them, driving them to places. I get a lot of satisfaction um, because it's, it's a situation where you're doing something and it's of direct benefit to people and they appreciate it very, very much and it can make an amazing difference to people's lives. Our activities help reduce isolation and allow our members to remain a part of society for as long as possible. We invite other organizations and service providers to come to our meetings and to hear what we have to say. 
The Manchester and I takes our message out into the community because we need to raise awareness and improve the lives of everyone who has dementia. If you live with dementia and would like to be involved, we would love to hear from you. We need volunteers to help with travel and to support us at meetings. Any donations you could make would be greatly appreciated to help us continue our work. Thank you. Sorry, didn't mean to play it again. Just try and get on to the next slide. Okay, so um, just on, on that note, I would like to introduce uh, one of our founding members, John. Are you there, John? Yep. Um, John and Francis were both uh, two of the founding members of Dementia NI. Um, John, can you speak to um, everybody here today and explain a little bit more about why Dementia NI was established, please? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, dementia. I I was I was fifty two when I was diagnosed with frontal lobe uh, dementia, and at that time I was involved with the I just got involved with, with the Alzheimer's Society, so I went to 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 one of their meetings, and while I was there, I I, I discovered I discovered at that at that meeting the the the, the, the people with the dementia. Yeah, you know, hadn't hadn't got a voice. The, the their cares and and their workers and the people, all the people people was do, was doing all the talking talking for these people, and I and I thought to myself, God, this is not right. You know, these people the, these people can speak for themselves, and and I thought to myself there there and then I thought, well, I'm 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 going to do something about this. I'm I'm going to change this, and uh, I met another woman. On the day of a woman called Teresa Clark, who had also got dementia, and, and I spoke to her about my feelings at, at the time to her, and uh, we decided we decided to to uh, to take things in in their own hand and take things forward, and then we met with with the other three members at, who had the dementia, and and we said uh, um. And we met on a weekly basis for for almost two years to decide the structures and 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 the ethos ethos of the organisation of of what we wanted to do, and and um, and so so in the meantime I met a I met a girl a girl called Angela at, at one of the of, of, of one of the events that, that, that we were at and uh, I got talking to her and uh, she told me about Atlantic philosophies and and. Um, and what I told her about, about, about the vision that we had, uh, and uh, so so I secured I secured three hundred thousand pound to set up the organisation at that time, which was a godsend. But one the one of the main ethos of of my particular vision was, was for for people with the with the dementia to to have a voice, and and so so. Uh, then we got then then we got our board of directors on board, which which was which was a big 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 thing, and then and then and then our staff and and, and our members. Well, one of the other well, one of the other things about our organisation was that that we that we were set up groups for people with with the dementia throughout all the trust areas of Northern Ireland to have their voice heard, and. And and just to get to get together and and when people with the dementia is together, they can they they, they can talk talk to each other easily about the dementia easily about the dementia. And I found that I, I found that when we had the groups going, that 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 people like the contact like the contact which with each other with each other. So so. Dementia, dementia, and I has grown, has grown a lot, and thanks to and thanks to the dedication of 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 our staff, we are we are now as established and growing. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Um, just to bring you in there alongside John, um, what benefit has it brought to you to be involved in setting up an organisation like Dementia and I, following receiving a diagnosis? 
how has that empowered you as an individual and helped build your confidence and self-esteem to be involved in setting up this charity? Well, I uh, started out uh, in the same way as John from uh, um, the meeting of the Alzheimer's, you know, Alzheimer's uh, group and found this is not for me. Uh, again, I did meet Teresa uh, Clark, who had invited me to join her. And uh, as well as that, uh, we got into long and uh, it, we found it so different to what we have been seeing in the past that uh, it was the road we wanted to be on. And uh, it has made such a difference in my life having uh, able to chat to people and the uh, friendship and the, the family that we have uh, accumulated uh, together as a, a group. And it has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we have not only achieved so much, as John has told you about some of the things which we have achieved, uh, we have achieved so much uh, within ourselves and uh, uh, we have enjoyed having uh, the support of the uh, uh, all our staff and uh, we have been so lucky in our journey to have uh, been uh, uh, so, uh, supported by financially, and uh, but we've worked hard in order to get there. So, uh, as far as I am concerned, I uh, I am delighted that we uh, went ahead at the start and made up our minds that we were going to make something of this. So, thank you very much to both of you. Um, I'll just continue on there. Bear with me one second just to share the screen again. Okay, so the vision of dementia NI is that everyone is living well with dementia. Oh, bear with me. Can everybody see the screen again okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our mission is that people with dementia are actually the driving force and they're the ones that are driving positive change. Our organization has many values, such as um, we are led by people with dementia. We're an inclusive and accessible organization and we strive for many meaningful change. And we very much value um, the fact that our members are being heard and understood. Our goals are that we reduce the impact of a dementia diagnosis and help people throughout their journey. We have some members along with our, us today who have been very recently diagnosed and maybe might take the opportunity to explain as someone just very recently diagnosed how that um, becoming involved with dementia and I at such an early stage is reducing that impact of the diagnosis. We're involved in many campaigns led by people with dementia, which um, help to influence policy and practice both locally, nationally and globally. And we aim to further develop the, the membership of Dementia NI and reach out there to so many other people um, diagnosed with dementia throughout Northern Ireland. We aim to improve education and awareness about dementia, very much um, part of the reason why we're here with you guys here today. And we want to help to make communities more inclusive and welcoming for people who have that di diagnosis. Um, we also intend to review and develop organizational structures to ensure the sustainability of our organization and make sure that we're making a lasting change for people living with dementia. So um, our empowering support groups, John was speaking earlier on about our empowering support groups. So um, our empowering support groups meet usually before COVID. Um, we would have met every two weeks. We'd meet in a dementia friendly environment and the groups um, consist of between six to eight people who live with a diagnosis of dementia. Our organization is membership led and it's specifically for people with dementia and not for carers, where we do um, provide extra support to carers by signposting to other organizations. Um, dementia and I is specifically for people who live with that diagnosis themselves. So um, we invite uh, our, our, mem our support, our empowering support groups are very much about 
offering peer support for other people who have been diagnosed with dementia. And we regularly invite other visitors in to consult with our members um, to hear their voice and to hear their opinions um, to help shape services and support for people throughout Northern Ireland who live with dementia. Um, and this has um, many benefits. It helps other organisations and individuals learn more about um, people with dementia and how to work alongside people with dementia and how to support them. But it also helps people with dementia um, to build their self-esteem, which is very often lost after a diagnosis. Many people following a diagnosis feel that it's the beginning of the end. And through the peer support and being involved in our important empowering support groups, people find very often that they still have a purpose in life and that they still very much have life to live and they are still of worth and of value and can still contribute a meaningful contribution within society. So, as I said, the purpose of the empowering support groups are for peer support, consultation, information sharing, and we would often feed back to Dementia NI as well to explain um, what changes within our own charity um, that we need to make to help people with dementia also. The benefits um, are there listed. Um, it's about, um, again, um, just giving people the opportunity to have their voices heard and to, to speak to other organisations and individuals. We provide a very safe and secure environment, which um, we make sure is um, supported by staff and volunteers. So we're also involved in many other initiatives. Uh, we developed a walking rugby group um, alongside Ulster, Ulster Rugby Club, which was extremely successful. I have never seen so many um, outgoing and um, what's the word? Whenever you're they're, they're, they were like on a battle field, a lot of them. Um, they were very competitive, exactly the word I'm looking for. I've never seen so many competitive people with dementia in my life before on um, the rugby pitch. <laughs> um, Alison can tell you a little bit more about that. We've also established dementia friendly tennis, which again, Alison is involved in. And um, we would have outings to sporting events such as the Belfast Giants. We're involved in different dark projects and some of our members are at the moment involved in creating a quilt, which they might also be able to tell you a little bit more about later on as well. So we raise awareness through the media, through social media talks, uh, workshops, and we also have an established Real Lives event, which we would run um, periodically throughout the year. We have developed the Dementia Jam Card alongside the Now Group, which is an award-winning jam card, which allows people with dementia um, or with communication difficulties to um, have a way of communicating with people to let them know that they might just need a little bit more assistance. The Dementia Jam Card is also available through Dementia and I, and you can get further details of me at the end. Um, so on the back of the jam card, it says, please be patient. I have dementia and memory problems and may need assistance. And that's available in a credit size card, um, credit card size card. It's available in a key form and also in a mobile app. Beyond empowerment, we have been involved in many other projects. Uh, we worked alongside Dementia Together NI, which is, um, uh, it was, uh, organization set up by the Health and Social Care Board and the Public Health Agency. We inputted into the Dementia Care Pathway, um, the Dementia Learning and Development Framework, and we also took part in the Still Me campaign, which you may remember from the billboard campaign and the TV adverts from us a few years ago. So it was actually our Dementia NI members who spoke themselves about um, I'm still me. I may have a diagnosis of dementia, but I'm still the same person. Recently, um, we have, over the last couple of years, been involved in um, co-producing the Inspired app um, alongside Ulster University. This app, Watch This Space, hopefully will be launched next week. Um, so this is a fantastic app, which Dementia and I members help to co-produce. Um, where people with dementia and their carers can use as a tool for reminiscence. You can store your photographs, uh, your videos, and your own personal music that you, you like listening to on this one app. 
and it is something that we've worked alongside very closely on with the University of Ulster over the past number of years and we're really excited for this launch within the next week or so, so watch this space for that. We've also developed a dementia awareness game alongside Queen's University and um, that was funded by the Dementia Services Development Trust. Again, you can look into that um, on their website, www.dementiagame.com. So Dementia and I members are involved in so, so many different um, projects and programs throughout Northern Ireland. We've established a short breaks program for people living with dementia to actually go away for a night or two. Um, and we pay for that for them to go away and have a, a bit of quality time away with their, their family member or an informal carer. Um, just recently, last year, um, to, um, just launched our new strategic plan, obviously because of COVID, um, we've had to make a few changes. So on the back of COVID, we have developed a tablet loan service for people with dementia so that they can keep in touch with their peers um, over Zoom through our Empower and Support groups, which now meet online. We have developed um, virtual groups that meet on a weekly basis for our dementia and our members to come together. We've set up an In the Same Boat peer support Facebook group where they can regularly post on messages to each other for support and friendship. And we've developed online activity sessions such as quilt making, storytelling, live music, uh, yoga sessions, believe it or not. Our members also um, participate in a yoga session every Tuesday morning. We've had meditative sessions and also magic shows. So there's been lots going on over the past year to help people with dementia stay active and involved, even despite the lockdown. One of the um, other exciting projects that we've been involved in, which we're hoping to launch over the coming months, is a song called The Journey. This song was inspired by the members of Dementia NI and it's written and co-produced by Cora Kelly, a local songwriter. The song is really, really powerful and you can find it on Spotify um, or iTunes also. Um, we will actually be starting to um, put this out on CD over the coming months as well and you can buy it as a, for a donation price and it will be available through our website over the weeks ahead. Um, so this song was developed by um, the Dementia NI members and they wanted to highlight the realities of living with the diagnosis. Um, the words of the journey are written by the members and their honest views and opinions of what it's like to live with dementia on a day-to-day -day basis. And they wanted the public to hear their voices through song in order for um, others recently diagnosed to have some hope and also so other people could understand more about what it's like actually living with dementia from their own perspectives. So the song's due to be released on CD um, and by download over the coming weeks and months. So look out for that. And you can look for further details um, on our social media and our new website, which is also going to be launched. So we've, we've a busy time ahead with plenty going on at the minute. It's very exciting times for Dementia and I. We have also just um, recruited our new CEO who started in post on Monday, Claire. So it's all changed and um, hopefully now 2021 is a bright um, start for us, um, everybody throughout Northern Ireland now on the back of the pandemic pandemic and we hope that things will be moving forward. So I've done enough talking. I am um, now going to introduce you to some of our Dementia NI members and go on to the questions. So um, first of all, I would like to um, open the floor. Oh, I was just going back right to the very start. Bear with me one second. I will stop sharing my screen for a moment. Alison, can I introduce you first of all? Would you like to? Yes, yeah. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and explain a little bit more about yourself and how you got to become involved with Dementia and I? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, my name's Alison. Uh, I live in Dundonald. Um, I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's when I was 57. And shortly after diagnosis, I was put in contact with the Dementia Navigator who in turn put me in contact with Ashley and I then joined or went to my first empowerment group and 
on diagnosis, I sort of felt, as Ashley had sort of said earlier, you know, that life was over, really. I, I couldn't see any way of life sort of going on. And I can honestly say within half an hour up and in the dementia and I empowerment group, I felt my mood totally change. I felt there was hope. I was with people who were living exceptionally well with the diagnosis of dementia. And I could see that there very much was life still to live. Um, and as I say, it just completely changed my whole outlook and it started to lift the me out of the black hole that I had been in before I had gone along to that meeting. Alison, can I ask you, what has been your best or worst experience of people's reaction to your diagnosis? I th my worst reaction would be that some people feel they're being helpful by taking over everything and by thinking that you no longer are capable of doing stuff and they will do stuff for you. Uh, so I say that probably would be the worst experience, you know, the worst, the thing I find most frustrating. Um, the best experience is probably that I have learned so many new skills and been sort of involved with so many different organizations that I normally, or I wouldn't have had the chance to, to be involved with. So as I say, out of, and I get, you know, a, a diagnosis that obviously is life changing, you know, some good have sort of come out of it as well. And you, you learn to make the most of every single day and, um, and to live that day as best you can. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the initiatives that you've been involved in since you became involved with Dementia and I? Yeah, as I say, I have been involved with sort of quite a few, obviously meetings sort of like this, but you know, on a fun sort of side of things, you know, that they had started up dementia friendly tennis and I'd never had a tennis ball in my life uh, and thought I actually had lost the plot when she was suggesting that we would do this. But I had gone along to, I, I, I probably get the initial, is it CIYMS? That's it, yeah. Uh, and they had set up, and as I say, there you sort of, you know, they had quite a few helpers, so you sort of had near enough one to one with somebody, you know, who sort of supported you, and and I absolutely loved that. And there was a few members who had been going along right from the onset of it until it stopped, as lockdown sort of hit, and unfortunately, like so many other things, it hasn't got back uh, and I really do miss that and then there was the initiative set up with the Ulster Rugby and again when you get the phone call saying they're going to do rugby you sort of think what uh, but you go along and it's brilliant the crack was it was our group met I think it was a Thursday morning and the crack was my day you know it, it was sort of for an hour, an hour and a half, I think, you know, where we played rugby and then had, with all dementia and I stuff, you had finished with a cup of tea or coffee and a bun. Um, and as I say, it was just, it was a way to do some sort of exercise as well, the competitive spark, and then and you could see the members who had played rugby before and sort of forgetting that they weren't there to rugby tackle you, you know, it wasn't... Uh, it was more gentle, was supposed to be more gentle than that. But it, again, you, you came out and your mood was totally lifted because you had an hour of real fun. And it was a chance of, you know, getting to to meet other members from different empowerment groups that you didn't necessarily go to. Yeah, I think one of the things about the um, the the rugby that stands out for me, um, the the guests here today are doing a fundraiser in aid of um, in memory, sorry, of George Kennedy. And one of my memories of George from uh, the walk in rugby was that he really came out as a very sportsman. And he was definitely one of those ones that was 
definitely out there to make sure he scored a try as best he could. So that's one of my memories from from um from the rugby sessions. That was that's a very fond memory for me. Liz, can I come to you, please? Can I ask you um just a, a question as well? So if you could give one piece of advice to a health professional when they're first meeting a person newly diagnosed with dementia, what would that be? Understand that the person, as I would say to anybody, I'm still me underneath, you know, and I may have to do things differently than I would normally do them, but give me the time and I can do the things myself. And don't think that my brain isn't working because I take so much time to think it all through, but give me that time because it's quite often, it's very hard, first of all, to form words, to put words into sentences and to make sure you're using the words in the right context. And for me, that's, I mean, after an hour of talking, I feel I've run a marathon. So, you know, for anybody at the start, don't treat me, I, I know I have dementia, I know I've lived with it, or I, whether you're newly diagnosed, just give the person the time, listen to them, and try and understand that they still are the same person, only they have a diagnosis. Thank you very much for that, Liz. Stephen, can I come to you now? Um, I would just want to know from yourself there, um, can you just take yourself off mute, first of all, if that's okay, that's you. Um, can I just ask you, what have you learned now living with dementia that you wish you would have known when you were just newly diagnosed? Um, before I was diagnosed, I'd never really give dementia much thought and never passed any remark on it. Um, my diagnosis was actually quite horrific, but without going into any details, uh, I thought I was going to see a doctor for another consultation or and it ended up with my diagnosis consultation and it just came suddenly upon me. I was an international truck driver for 35 years. Um, that day I lost my license so suddenly I became unemployed. And it just a total shock and I knew nothing at all about dementia. I was told, in fact, I wasn't told, my wife was told that I had dementia. The doctor actually ignored me in the room that day, spoke everything to my wife and it was though I wasn't there at all. Um, we left that room that day totally in shock. We had no information whatsoever about dementia. We knew nothing about dementia. So I went home and the first thing as usual onto Google straight away, find out all I could about dementia. And over that weekend, I was convinced that come Monday morning, I was going to be dead. Um, moving on. I had a bad year the first year. I went into a depression. I attempted to take my own life. Um, ridiculous. Obviously, I failed at that. So, moving on, um, the Western Health Trust saw fit to see me or to place me in a facility down here in, in Fermanagh for people that were mentally unstable and people with drug problems. And that was their answer to dementia. I fought and fought against the system and eventually I was lucky to be offered a place with dementia and I, and that was the biggest step forward I have taken with dementia. I can now see that people can live with dementia and move forward. We have some fantastic friendships formed here. Um, my initial first meeting when I went to dementia and I, I was very apprehensive. I was terrified of actually going into the place. I didn't know what to expect. I'd been on my own all the way up to that stage. Um, I walked into that meeting that day and one of the fellow members there, Davey, sort of took me under his wing and looked after me and Paula, our empowerment officer at the time, she was very, very good with us. And just gone on was enough from that day and moved forward. I've had some fantastic moments and memories with Dementia and I. Um, we've been to Scotland, to Edinburgh with a deep meeting over there and met people on the mainland who have similar problems and we've formed strong alliances with the mainland. Um, I can't thank Dementia and I enough for what I've done, but I have learned now that to take people on face value, 
Um, I was diagnosed in 2016, and since 2016, um, I became unemployable. Anybody diagnosed with dementia is a health and safety risk, and you become a risk to people to employ you. So I threw my life into my dogs. I breed Irish Terriers. I show and exhibit them all over Europe. But since my diagnosis, I have qualified as a judge. I specialise in the Irish Terriers. I've judged these dogs all over Europe. This year, um, I've had two invitations so far to judge next year in Russia and America. So, you know, people with dementia are not supposed to be able to do these things. We are proving daily that with a diagnosis, it may take us a little bit longer, but we're going to get there and we will still be ourselves. We don't need people looking down as we need people to accept us for who we are and give us a chance to move forward. We're still the same person at the back of it all. That's great. Thank you very much for that, Stephen. Davy, can I come to you, please? Um, I would just like to ask you a question as well. Um, what's the one thing you would really like to see changed in the way dementia care is provided in Northern Ireland? Well, the, the one thing I think I'd like to see changed is a, a standard diagnosis over the over the north. Um, different trusts have different ways of uh, working. I'd like to see standard a standard diagnosis and a standard care. For that. Um, plenty of information and just as people say, just treat, treat us like people. Um, I, I think the care really should, from early on, you know, the care, what to expect and, and what maybe the journey is going to be like. Um, and really compassion with the professionals, with the consultants and um, with, with the medical staff. Um, I find it quite difficult without information. I think key is, is as much information as possible. Um, to help the to help the person with the early onset dementia and help their families. Great, thank you very much for that, Davy. Chris, can I come to you now? Um, I would um, just like to to introduce you as well. You're quite a recent member um, of Dementia NI. Is there any top tips for health professionals to best support the family of someone after a diagnosis of dementia? Well, as you say, I'm uh, very new to this. Uh, on, my, uh, on my side, I was being diagnosed. Um, it's, it's hard to say what sort of tips you could give the professionals. I mean, um, there's so many professionals out there who um, approach this in different ways. And I can't see any way that they approached us um, over the years as uh, can be you know, put down upon. Um, my father was diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's very early uh, in his life. And I, I didn't know what uh, authorities to go to, but my mother, she was very, very good at um, getting everything sorted out. So uh, our, my, my brother and myself and our, our wives and that we just supported rather than um, putting uh, any input into what goes on. The professionals had dealt with it pretty well. I mean, that's 15, 20 years ago. And uh, as I'm only new to this on this side of the fence now, uh, it, uh, I I a question. What about? Yes. Um, for you that's just been recently diagnosed then, do you feel that you got enough information from health healthcare professionals following your diagnosis that would best support you and your family? Do you think we're given enough information at the time of diagnosis? Uh, yes, I'm with um, the Belfast City Trust at the moment. They have been very good. Uh, on, the, on the part of... Um, the charities, I I was lucky to come across you, Ashley. Uh, whenever I first was diagnosed, we thought we thought it was Alzheimer's, so I thought my first point of call is Alzheimer's Society, and I rang the Alzheimer's 
line and there was a, an answer machine and they said they would get back to me. The, 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 I got back, they got back to me on two occasions. The Sunday night when I was with my family, a, a girl phoned me and she, um, she couldn't uh, talk to me because my family were in the room. I said, you know, they phoned me back then the next morning. The next morning, whenever they phoned me, it wasn't um, a, a person such as yourself who uh, looks after the um, the patients. It was, uh, see, this is what's wrong with the dementia. Your, your, your words don't come, you know, they get, they, get, they get locked in. The fundraisers were the people who phoned me looking to see if I could um, help them with a fundraising. Now, of course, um, our charities need um, a lot of fundraising, but I wasn't bringing them to say, look, I've uh, got a group here, I can help you fundraise. I'm here looking for help. Yeah. And they yeah. didn't have anybody on the line to give me help. Okay, no problem. Right? So, so um, I, had, I had completely wiped that out. I, 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 um, there's no one there to help me. And it was only after I was told that um, I haven't got Alzheimer's, it's a different form of dementia, that I looked for um, someone else. And uh, when I rang your, rang your line, as soon as the phone was lifted, you helped me, you helped me straight away. You were in there, everything um, ruled out. And you, you know, I've got into this uh, group with you. And the, uh, Dementia NI is absolutely superb in the, the, what they follow, the, li the lines they follow and what, what you do. So, you know, so um, whenever a charity is being set up to look after people, they should have a line you know, for um, point of, first point of call, which all STEM groups, as I said, don't have. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. Um, so can I, um, this is, a sensitive subject um, for everybody. Just over the past year, we've all um, we've all lost people um, through maybe it be COVID or for other illnesses um, that had just happened to be during um, the pandemic. Can I ask, um, how do you handle bereavement or difficult news as a person living with dementia? Um, I'm opening this up to anybody because it's a sensitive one. So if anybody wants to speak and share their experience, I'll just let it open. Alison, go on ahead. Yeah, unfortunately, from last March, we have lost quite a few sort of aunts, uncles, cousins, and a nephew. Um, and it is difficult and I think at the moment, because of the situation that you can't visit people and you can't sort of be going to other relatives' homes, you know, you don't get that sort of support. And I think, you know, with myself, with it, it it's the, the realisation that somebody's gone on more than one occasion. You know, you know they've gone and then your memory sort of, you know, you don't remember it and then you remember it again. So it's like going through the whole process a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth time. Um, and as I say, I think just at the moment, just with not having the normal grieving process, which I think in Northern Ireland as a general, as people, we're very good at doing, you know, sort of with visiting homes and supporting each other and you know, you have that sort of time with family and friends and you get to talk about the person who has died and, you know, you relive their life and the good parts of their lives and also, you know, you share sort of memories. That, but I think it is difficult for somebody with a dementia diagnosis. It's, But it's hard to explain, sort of. I think you just, you know, with fam your own sort of family support around you, you sort of get through it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, John, can I ask you, oh, sorry, Liz, I'll just go to you. Um, you wanted to, to speak there. Uh, Des, I mean, we had a, a brother-in-law um, passed away just before Christmas. And uh, 
I think more for me, I, I mean, I, I was upset. I, I couldn't even go to it because um, I'm one of the ones that uh, has to, oh, what is this? I, I, sorry? You have to shield? Yes, I, I have to shield, so I couldn't get to it. But more to the point, um, I live in Hemsworth Court, which is the place. Uh, it's set up by the trust, and it's it's uh, single apart apartments for individuals who want to try and stay independent with support, twenty four hour care support. And when I moved in at the same time when it just was opened, and you know all the people that I made friends with are gone. Now, I, I can't even bear to talk about that. And I just lost a really good friend, my husband now, uh, last year, I think it was. And, you know, it brings it home to you. Yeah. That, you know, <laughs> you could be next mm. you know and it's sad it, 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 I think it hits home more you know when, when it is somebody with dementia Thank you for that Liz um, and thank you to both of you for being so honest with such a delicate um, question there Davey Yeah I lost a couple of good friends today over this past year and one when I say on Saturday died in tragic circumstances I, as Alison said it's very difficult not being able to, to meet the family or, or or have your own grief in that way it, or even makes, it makes me very angry at the minute and then I feel very numb and uh, yeah. it's the anger for some reason I don't know where it comes from but, uh, yeah. and then the numbness sets in and you're totally detached from the, from the thing you know Thank you for that, Davy. Um, I'm just mindful of time. Um, we are due to finish in five minutes' time. Orla, with your permission, we'll battle through these questions and keep going. Um, if anybody needs to leave at quarter past um, two, then fair enough. This was going to be recorded anyway. Um, so if that's okay, Orla, can we just continue? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Ashley, yes, that's that's great. Um, I think we're all absolutely captivated and much from hearing from all of you so thank you great no problem i'll go on just for the next question then so um is it appropriate to mind to remind someone if they forget um can i go to somebody who hasn't answered yet um francis or yvonne would either of you like to answer that question is it appropriate to remind someone if they forget well i don't know I've gone, but I don't. I don't mind either way. I can take it, but there's a lot of people that couldn't. I can. I've accepted it, and, and as I say, there's. I have not uh, any hesitation, and uh, but I'd rather them not. I suppose it's a pro then. Pardon. It's appreciated when somebody does remind you. It is a uh, yes. Would it be more in the way that the reminder is presented that it's important? Would you agree with that? Yes, uh, definitely. So and using phrases such as "I've told you that already" or "Have you gotten?" or "Have you forgotten?" or "Are you stupid?" You know, but it's the way they approach and it's whether it's acceptable, obviously, or not. Great. Fantastic. Thanks very much for that. Um, what can we do to help? Um, is there anything that can slow down the progression? Um, well, from a medical point of view, I can answer that. Um, we actively promote um, people with dementia to stay active and alert and stay involved in everyday activities. Um, it's one of the reasons why we, we set up the different activities, the likes of the, the walking rugby and the tennis, the 
um, art projects, the quilt making, the yoga. Um, there's always the saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I always think of that phrase. And we try to empower people to stay as active and engaged in society for as long as possible. So from a dementia and I point of view, for us, that would be our ethos as an organization. Um, in terms of, is there anything else that can slow down progression? There are um, medications that can help slow down the progression of the symptoms. Um, but unfortunately at this stage, there is no cure. So I will answer that question. Um, is there a recognized progression or is it different for everyone and can it plateau? Again, um, depending on the type of dementia, Alzheimer's, is the most, um, Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. And with um, Alzheimer's disease, you would see a, a, a slope. So it might be a slowed progression, depending on the individual and what stage they're at. Um, the second most common cause of dementia is vascular dementia. Whereas with vascular dementia, you may see a more stepped decline. So someone might plateau for a certain amount of time and then there might be a certain dip that might be caused by um, a stroke or um, some sort of damage to the brain. Um, the vascular dementia is caused by a lack of blood supply to the brain. So when that has um, significantly um, damage the brain, you might see a sudden dip at that stage. Um, so do you have any advice, members, back to you now, um, do you have any advice for family members finding the transition into the caring role difficult? Can I ask you, first of all, um, how did your family react to your diagnosis? John, go on ahead. Yeah, uh, my fault. My, I found my family for for, for years w w was in total denial of of, of, of my dementia. Uh, I, I found it very very difficult to work with my family b b because of their disbelief of of of, of my di di diagnosis, and and it was extremely it was extremely hard for me to to get around to them as only as, as only in in, in this re very recent years now, of which I, since I, I play a high profile role, role within this organisation, and, and they've come to recognise that, and they've and, and they've come to to to, to recognise yes, that, that there is they can hear in my voice and whatnot, and 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 and, and different things just going on now that is, that is progression, but for. But for years, the difficulty was was my family that the, they were in denial. And how did that turn around then, John? Um, was there was it partly to do with the involvement of dementia and I um, and yeah. your your presence out there raising awareness that helped with that? Yeah, for, for, very much so. Uh, you know. Uh, for, when I first when I first started out in this journey journey with it with this dementia, you know, I felt very much on on, on my own. I, I I felt like 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 most of the other members, and we've talked about this many times that that, that life was on a standstill. Me to me, I was in that dark place. I was in the dark darkest place of my life, and I had to deal with that on my own, be, be, because because of my family's my family's denial and my family's disbelief of what I was going through and and, and it was it was it, it was an absolutely horrendous time for me then back almost for a year a year and a half before I started out in the journey that I'm on now you know but but I will say I want to say one thing that the best the best one of the best things believe it or not that ever happened to me was was the diagnosis because because I was able I, I, I was able to know what was going on then in my life and I was able to plan to to, to plan my life around that and, and 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 that's what I have done from 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 I started to accept it and my family my family accepted it and and, and and seeing what I do within dementia and I has has really helped my has really helped my pathway here. 
That's great. Thank you very much for that, Dawn. Um, Alison, can I just go back to you? Um, you've been involved in many um, dementia um, inclusive initiatives over the, the past number of years, the likes of the, the rugby and the tennis. What are three things that we can do to help create a dementia friendly therapy space or session? Give us three top tips. Um, I think awareness of you know, if whoever is running the space, you know, that if there were sort of a, um, sorry, I can't sort of think of the top of my head, but, um, you know, to me, just having people there to support, uh, but not to take over, uh, but just to be in hand if you needed them and a safe sort of environment that, Sorry, I'm not sure if that's answering your question. I that's should. okay. Um, is there anybody else that wants to chip into that? So we're just looking for three things that we can do to help create a dementia-friendly therapy space or therapy session. So what three tips would you give to the professionals and students here today on um, how to make things more accessible and easier for people with dementia? Stephen, go on ahead. Just say the biggest thing you could possibly do is to give us time and just to remain calm with us, to actually talk to us ourselves. Don't ignore us. Uh, I've seen so, so many times when I've been to different appointments with doctors, with my wife, people ignore me altogether and just speak to my wife. It's as though I'm not in the room. So to me, the most important thing you can possibly do is talk to me in a calm manner. Um, my brain still works. I can still take things in. I can still answer perfectly, but just give me time and listen to what I have to say. Just please don't ignore me because I have dementia. Thank you, Stephen. Do well you... said, Stephen. Oh, okay. Um, Davey, do you want to go ahead there? You want to speak? Yeah, I would just like to say for a friendly therapy space to have a, a, a bright airy room. Um, uh, no background music, no background noise. Um, be careful if you're flooring the carpets and some colours can, to me, the floor looks as if it's moving, especially black or darker patterns. It looks like the floor is actually, actually moving and watch out for doormats going in the door. It, it looks like a black hole to me and actually, I actually have to step over doormats for fear of falling into that hole. And, it's just those simple, those simple things make a make a big difference. And again, talk to people and see what what works for them. You know, and put it all together. Thank you. Great, thank you, John. You had your card up there. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just wanted to say to to people like you, you have to be aware of 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 people like us, us when you're talking. To, it, it takes us it takes us much 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 longer to. To figure out what you're trying to say to us, to us. So, so as as uh, Stephen was saying, I, 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 patience, patience with us is 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 the name of the of the game because we do get frustrated very very quickly, and when the frustration when the frustration sets in, everything else stops. Your brain just goes dead. It stops. Great, thank you for that, Chris. I'm just going to come to you again. Um, so you're not off the you're not off the spotlight yet. Here we go. Um, so just want to ask you, Chris. Um, you you're there. Right. Are you on, on the phone? Sorry, I wasn't. Um, no, sorry, actually, I'm on a. That's a all right. I'll ask somebody the, else. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. I'll go on to somebody else. Um, so we just want to know from one of the members then. Um, how has COVID changed what Dementia and I ha, um, offers for, um, well, this actually says, what has COVID changed? Oh, sorry, I'll begin. How has COVID changed what Dementia and I can do to support families? Well, um, predominantly we are here to support people with dementia um, and we can sign posts to, to family members and carers for extra support. But um, does somebody there, Chris, are you back? Are you back with us, Chris? Yes, sorry, that was uh, the doctor's surgery. They were just 
getting some of my meds sorted. <laughs> no problem. Chris, do you want to explain a wee bit more about how Dementia and I has supported you since you've come on board? Do you want to explain some of the initiatives that you've been involved in and the different online groups that you attend? Oh, yes. Uh, it, it, I was really interested uh, we got in, uh, in touch with um, the health minister about the, this um, adult, I can't, see that word just disappeared out of my right. head. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question again. So Dementia and I, since COVID has hit over the past year, we would have, grown, we would have run groups um, for people to meet in person. Now, obviously yes. that can't happen now because of lockdown and we're meeting online. Do you want to just explain to the guests here today about some of the different online activities that you've been doing alongside Dementia and I? Yes, well, I, I uh, took a, a yoga um, lesson there on Tuesday morning. And it's, it's actually- Can I ask, had you, done, had you done yoga before? Had you participated? Year, year, years ago, I, uh, I, was, um, I was taking yoga, yoga classes. So I, I knew that I could just um, step in uh, blind. You know, I didn't have to have an introduction. So that, that was good. And, and it's as well, you know, we put our, uh, our, um, th our tablets on mute, you know, so there's no, there's no uh, interference in the class. Well, it's just as well, because every single bit bone in my body creaked. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I think we all do that. <laughs> uh, and we were you know, speaking earlier on as well, Chris, just about the empowering support groups and how you've started coming along to them. And the purpose for those empowering support groups is to consult with other organisations about yes. um, their services and support and how they um, can alter their services in line to support people with dementia and to make sure that people with dementia's voices are heard in any practice delivery that's um, that is um, taking place. Could you tell me um, how does that help boost your self-esteem after that diagnosis of dementia? Oh, it's, it's great because now I know I can um, help make a difference in the country. Um, this particular one we're in, uh, involved in at the moment with the health minister, uh, we can really put our, uh, our, our voices in there. Uh, whereas before, whenever a, a new law is being uh, set, set out, it's the, the hierarchy doing these things up and they put it through uh, the parliament. And it, it, there's, there's a lot of things missing from it and a lot of things wrong with it, but it just goes through as, as made law, you know, and we have to live with it. Um, whereas now that we're involved, we can say to them, hold on a minute, that particular point of the law is incorrect and pretty dangerous. So you know, don't be putting that there. That's yeah. great, thank you very much. So um, just to give a bit more background on that, we are involved in different initiatives um, and we would consult with the likes of the Department of Health and other departments um, within government as well. And we have been involved in several projects. We're coming to an end here guys, but just quickly, can somebody answer the question, has COVID opened up new opportunities or different ways of supporting that we can continue after restrictions ease? Stephen. Um, I'd just like to say Dementia and I has been absolutely fantastic through the COVID experience. Um, there was different members in the groups that we'd heard about and there was different groups all over the province. Now I'm down here in the West in the, the Western Trust. We would occasionally meet up with some of the other groups, but I didn't really know the people. But at the moment, the way things have gone now, I know everybody, I, I know faces, I know to speak to people. We've formed some even better friendships, stronger friendships, friendships that will last us all through. And has made the group so much tighter through these Zoom meetings that we regularly have. Um, all the different activities uh, that we do online, there's so much availability there. I mean, if you really want to be, you can be online most days. Um, I just feel that, these Zoom meetings that Dementia and I has arranged for us has just made the whole thing so much tighter. And we're now coming together as one rather than individual groups around the province. I'm just so, so happy for Dementia and I. Thank you. Great. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that. So I've just got the screen up there again now. Um, 
So just um, we just ask you to spread the word, everyone. Um, we do normally um, have groups throughout Northern Ireland that meet in face-to-face -face basis, but obviously because of COVID, that doesn't happen at the moment. Um, we do um, now operate via Zoom. So if Alison, you... Uh, I mean, uh, Ashley, Alison has her card up. <laughs> oh, sorry, Alison, go on ahead. Yeah, no, no, you're okay. As I say, I was just really going to say exactly the same as Stephen said, you know, the uh, Zoom has, I think without Zoom throughout this lockdown, I think a lot of us would be in a lot darker position. You know, it's just lovely to be able to go online and to see other people's faces and to have a bit of interaction and, and chat. And as I say, for me, it has been lifelong. And as Stephen said as well, it's been an opportunity to get to know members that you maybe only would meet once or twice a year and you'd only really say hello to not really have a conversation so dementia and i i think have done remarkably well john go on ahead yeah i just i just wanted to say to the to 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 the people that are present today that that, that we do appreciate uh uh f f f feedback on, on your experience today i would be very much appreciate it yeah, on that, um, I would hope to um, share uh, uh, just a, a bit of a, a feedback form with you guys, if that's okay at the end. Um, so just, um, if you do want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have a new website launching very soon um, over the next couple of weeks, so watch this space for that. We do have the, the single coming out uh, over the months ahead as well with Cora Kelly. So again, listen out for that. You can find it on Spotify. Um, if you'd like to donate, volunteer or carry out fundraising, which you are all doing at the moment. And by the way, can we say a massive thank you on behalf of, on behalf yeah. of Shane and I for that? Yeah. Yes, thank um, you so much for all It your really answers. is thank very you. much appreciated um, from all of us. It really is. Um, if you know anyone um, who may be living with dementia and needs more support, um, we have different telephone numbers there available. And a massive thank you really to everybody for coming along and um, inviting us here today. It has been a lovely experience to be able to come and share. Um, Michelle, are you wanting to say something there? I was just going to say, could I say thank you as well to your members and just to share that everything that um, your members have been chatting about, about saying about how empowering that your organisation and it is and about voices and getting things out there. That has certainly been my experience of being able to do research with yourselves and it's been like a real privilege to be able to do it. Um, every um, session that I come to with our co-researchers is just it's so enjoyable and it's great and being able to actually get everybody does share their opinions everybody does um, talk openly about ways to sort of change things to improve it and honestly my research um, that the research that Orla and I and the team at Ulster University has been doing has massively improved and has been enhanced just by having um, working with yourselves in partnership and by having a group of co-researchers and just everything is developed. So everything that they have talked about today is very, very true about what the organisation brings. And I'll put my hand down, but thank you. Thank you. One last thing. Can we ask you all to put your camera on and give us a wave? And if possible, we'd like to take a group shot of everybody there, just so we know who we've been speaking to. And so we can maybe take a, a photograph of us all together. Um, We've got some feedback coming through, through there as well, just to say thank you so much for your time and all you've shared with us today. That has been such a valuable time for all of our future um, for speech and language therapists. Um, that's from Jill. Um, Rosalind says, I've learned a lot. Thank you so much. And Liz, our Dementia and I member has replied to say thank you to everyone. So um, I'm not sure that everybody on screen here, I'm trying my best. Ashley, I'm just going to take a minute while you're getting everybody on screen just to ask okay. our students and staff who hasn't said anything yet. If you want to use the chat function just to put up a few comments and show your appreciation of what today has meant, because I know certainly for me, I've learned an awful lot. It's been absolutely so powerful and motivating just to learn about your own leadership skills, how you've thought to have your voice heard and influenced 
um, in so many ways. Um, it really is very inspiring. I think we can learn a lot from you. So um, thank you for sharing your, your stories with us today. Um, we will be sending a, a feedback form um, through to Orla, if that's okay afterwards. If you wouldn't mind giving us some feedback, it would be very much appreciated. Um, just on that, I'm doing a bit of a screenshot of you as we go along here, just to try and get you all in, and just to say, um, share our appreciation afterwards as well, just on Facebook, if that's okay with everybody, it'll be on our social media. Um, Oh my goodness, the comments are coming in thick and fast. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm trying to, to reduce them for a minute so I can quickly take a photograph, but it's not working. <laughs> there we go, I think that's it. Um, so I will um, share all your comments as well with everybody. Um, with all the Dementia NI members afterwards, so I can actually download these and share them with the Dementia NI members. Um, I'm going to pass back to Orla now just to finish off. And again, thank you so much from myself and from everybody from Dementia NI. Thank you very much, Ashley, and thank, thank you. you to thank you. all of our eight members. I'll mention your names again. We've got John, Francis, Liz, Yvonne, Steve, Christopher, Alison, and Davy. Um, we really do appreciate your time and sharing your very personal stories with us today. I think that has been really um, valuable to all of us and to our students and your tips for us as health professionals. I think um, we will never forget. Um, I especially remember some of the things that have been said today. I love what Alison said in terms of living exceptionally well with dementia. I think that word exceptionally comes across your range of creative activities. Um, it's so inspiring, such an incredible range of um, activities that you're all being part of, particularly in this online environment. Um, I think we've learned very much about giving you time um, and listening to you and speaking to you um, and that people can live well with dementia. You certainly, certainly have shown us that today and um, that we will accept you for who you are. So some very powerful um, bits of information and learning for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you as well. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. If we could all put our cameras on, if we could have a gallery view, maybe. <laughs> so I've had to do all... three separate screenshots, Orla, because um, I couldn't get everybody in, but I'll see if you can do it any better than what I can. So put the gallery view on. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that as well. We're just going to unmute and Give a round of applause to show our appreciation this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so that's, I think that's everything from us. Thank you again for your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.